What's up, everybody? It's Alex from Heavy New York, and on the phone, we got DW from Death White. Thank you so much for your time today, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us, Alex. Yep. It's so awesome to have you here. So, Grave Image, as I told you before, it's actually in our top 20 for the best albums of 2020 so far. I really want to know, like, get, like, the most basic question out of the way, but, like, what was the thought process going into the making of this album? Was there kind of, like, a preconceived idea? Was there a lot of improvising involved? How did Grave Image really come to be? Yeah, we are mainly a studio band, so there's little in terms of improvising. We actually do very detailed demos to the point where if we really wanted to, we could release them as actual albums. We probably would never go that far, but it's a very long and drawn out process. Our previous album for Black Tomorrow came out in 2018. However, we recorded it in 2016 and we're going to release it on our own in early 2017, but literally a week before we were going to do that, we got in touch with Season of Mist, who agreed to put the album out. And so it was decided that they would wait a full year before they put it out. And so we actually had an extra 12 months to work on new material. So by the time Four Black Tomorrow was released, we were already well into the songwriting for Grave Image. Mm-hmm. And Grave Image was the result of that extra time, that extra tinkering, and some of the lessons we learned from For Black Tomorrow, and probably the main edict with the band at least, was that we had to get heavier, and we had to focus on some of our more metal influences, if you will. So the album is really a combination of that heaviness, and some of our more melancholic influences, which are typically bands like Catatonia, and Paradise Lost, and My Dying Bride, and bands of those nature so yeah nothing to really do based on the fact that we've only played one live show in the band and everything we do is from the comfort of our homes and then the studio nothing we do is uh improvised it's, it's always a long and drawn out process that requires a lot of tinkering and observation and back and forth between the four of us until we agree upon a song so it's, it's a very long but rewarding process and we are now back in it again, thinking about album, album number three. So it's we're using this time in quarantine to the best that we can. Mm-hmm. Well, being that you had you know twelve months to make Grave Image, like did as what we're hearing, almost kind of like the first initial take, or did these songs kind of change a lot over a long span of time? Yeah, they uh, a lot of them changed a lot over over time. Uh, a few of the songs, I think the first single, the label release, which is further from Salvation, that came very quickly and was not tweaked. That was the earliest song out of the batch, but I could point to several songs on the album that were revised several times before we committed them to tape. The song Among Us went through a drastic revision. I think we almost dumped the tempo when that song came to fruition. The early version of the song was much slower and doomier, but it just didn't quite seem right with us. The last song on the album, which is Return to Silence, we must have changed the course at least four or five times before we came to a good spot with it. But those are the type of things that you do as a band if you don't feel comfortable with something and if not everyone is happy, then it's probably worth revisiting those ideas. We're not one of those bands, I'm sure you talk to a lot of bands who tell you that they go with the first take or they improvise something and they just go with it. We're not really that type of band. We, we tend, and maybe to our own detriment, to mull of our material uh, quite a bit. And so that, this is where all these revisions come in and these changes. And that's just a natural part of the songwriting process. It works for us. It may not work for other bands, but two albums and two EPs in to our career, this is what's working for us. And I would imagine we'll be doing the same exact thing going forward. Mm-hmm. I've noticed, like, I've got, I've felt many different emotions and had many different senses of imagery from listening to this album. Like, In Eclipse gave me a completely different vibe than a song like Among Us or Allowed to Run or No Horizon, etc. Are these songs almost, like, representative of, of an emotion that you guys were feeling at a particular time, in a way? Yeah, a lot of those songs that, that you mentioned, they, they have different feelings to, to them. So it, it, it is representative of our emotions at the time they they each sort of translate differently here I, I don't think there's really one direct mood across 
across the whole album. If you take a song like An Eclipse and compare it to a song like No Horizon, they are, they're much different to each other, but they very much are representative of our mood at the, at the time. But um, the one thing we wanted to do with this album was the previous album was a lot more introspective, and this one is a lot uh, observational. So the songs you mentioned, and several of them throughout the album are, are of that tone, where we are looking at the world at large instead of ourselves. So that's probably the best way to look at it. It's that brave uh, image is really a snapshot of the world as it is today, although you can apply a lot of the themes that we cover they're sort of universal and they are long term these things have been going on for a long time and will continue to move forward as such so it's sort of a a current look at the world but also uh, if we think ahead to 20 years from now which will be 2040 uh, we're fairly confident by the themes that we explore will still be happening in the world sadly Mm -hmm. well do you find it maybe like the longer that you're working on something maybe the harder it is to sort of maintain that emotional moment in a way a little bit, yes, that's that's true. If you rework a song dozens upon dozens of times, it's either do you stick with the song or do you move forward with it? And there were a few songs that we had demoed and prepped for inclusion on the album that didn't make it, and those were the ones that received a lot of revisions as well. But typically, vocals are applied at the very end. We are very much a vocal-driven band, so we're really working on these songs for a while without the vocals actually I mean the instrumental part always comes first and then we apply the vocals but the caveat is, is that these riffs and arrangements are always written with the vocals in mind and so we're, we're very lucky to have a singer who can apply any sort of emotion that we want and typically when we demo stuff with him he nails it on the first try and we're usually very satisfied with what he does and that's that emotion is then carried over into the final recording process. And, you know, another thing we have going for us, too, if you want to look at it this way, is we don't really perform live. We've only done one live show as a band, so we don't test drive songs in a live arena. We don't play songs to the death. You know, a lot of bands play songs, and they, they never want to hear them again just because they've played it live so much, but that really doesn't apply to us in death, like, because we were demoing songs, and they still sound and feel fresh to us. Uh, well before we entered the studio and even when we're in the studio they still feel fresh to us so we're able to keep that level of emotion running through all of them mm -hmm. well you know what's what do you, being that you say that you're a vocal driven band is there a time is, is it fair to say that maybe like a concept a conceptual element or a lyrical theme can determine the outcome of the music itself in a way sometimes yeah i mean depending on the tone of the song will definitely be a reflection of the lyrics. I mean, it's, it's hard to write a aggressive song. We don't have too, very many aggressive songs with a sort of depressing undertone to them, if you know what I mean. If you have something slower, then it'll definitely work in that sort of mind frame. But the, the vocals ultimately drive what we do as a band. As I mentioned, we're, we're very lucky to have a very skilled and talented vocalist who can pull off of a variety of vocals as well as emotions and that really gives us carte blanche if you will to do what we please and you know another element to that too is we use almost all exclusively clean vocals and fitting clean vocals to music is much different than it is growled vocals or screaming vocals you have to be a lot more cognizant of the arrangements and the notes that you're using and so all of those elements combined it's Sometimes it can be a very tricky puzzle to put it together for a Death White song, but uh, ultimately, with the ten that we came away with for Great Image, we were we were very satisfied with all of them. Mm -hmm. And another thing that I'm really curious about is because being that mystery is like I would say what makes Death White I find so fascinating. You know, calling yourself DW, and you know, like there's I don't think there's a single photo shoot of you guys where like you know I can't pick out your identity in a way. But like, is it fair to say that maybe like you're almost is it this might be not be the best terminology to describe it but is it almost fair to say that you guys like maybe portray a character on the album in a way oh sure yeah. I mean, the, the reason why we don't include our names or identities is it's fairly simple I mean, when, when we started in 2012 
when we were going to be a studio band and nothing else, and we wanted a unique angle to the band, if, if you will, rather than just being a standard studio band who releases stuff. And so we, we thought that this would be a unique way to approach our music. Plus, some of us have been in other bands with varying degrees of success, and we didn't want the listener to have preconceived notions. Because as you know, if you find a new band and it's, uh, it's listed with the members of their previous bands, you're already, immediately, you're going to develop some opinion or have some idea of how you think it's going to sound. And that's just natural human nature. No one defaults for that. But we wanted to eliminate that entire, entirely. We wanted the listener to have a completely clean slate when listening to Death White and not have any preconceived notions when they listen to us. So that that idea with maybe some of that, you know, mystery, if you want to call it, that has really helped us in a way, and it's helped really put the focus on the music and not so much on personalities or identities. Because in reality, we are just four, four regular guys. I don't think we're terribly interesting people necessarily. And so that always pushes the attention to the music and the lyrics, which is what we want. And that's how what a lot of bands want. They would rather discuss the music and the content behind it instead of the politics that come with being in a band and having a shared history and a background to go off of. So there's a little bit of that in, in everything we do and where we've been fortunate that we respect our, our desire to remain nameless and anonymous. It's not out of vanity or we're not trying to be sneaky or anything like that. We just think it's the best presentation for Death White and it's again as I admit to keep on going back but it's really a place to focus on the music which is where it should always belong. Of course. I do think that presentation, like when I got the promo for Grave Image, I was very impressed with the presentation of it as much as I was impressed with the music. And I think that's fairly, fairly unique. Like being that like, is it fair to say that you almost portray somebody completely out of who you personally are? Or is the music and the imagery of Death White almost a direct extension of who you are? Probably more of a direct extension. I mean, we all have feelings of a whole broad array of feelings ranging from melancholy to happiness and everything in between and uh, some of that is reflected in our music I, we're, we're definitely not a happy band at, at all but sometimes there's a silver lining within our music so it's more of an extension of who we are and especially with this album is a reflection of the world as we see it if you think about things that are going on that really just you scratch your head with relation to climate change or how uh, truth is is used and sort of uh, now is a forgotten entity in the world it seems that uh, people will make up their own reality disregarding the truth several of the songs sort of tackle those themes and just the destruction of the world at large is these are very sad things and this is how we feel we, we think about future generations or the world that we continue to live in I mean all of us in the band are, are pretty young guys for all intents and purposes and so we have to start the consequences of these decisions being made so uh, these, these are personal feelings and that they're reflected in our music but we're, we're more observational we, we try to be pushy about it the listener can ultimately make their own mind with our lyrics there is certainly an abstract element to all of them but I think once you really get to the core of it people can figure out what we're going for so yeah the, the definitely largely is an extension of the four of our the four of us and our personalities yeah i love the way that you just answered this question because I, i've had this discussion with a lot of artists before about art being open to interpretation and sometimes a lot of people can argue that saying something is open to interpretation it's just almost a cop-out of the artist not wanting or not being able to explain the meaning or the concepts of their songs it feels yeah. like almost like the mysterious element that you portray though it is open to interpretation and the music yeah. in itself is able to demonstrate that it's not like you're just sure. saying it's open to interpretation as like a as a way of just getting out of answering about the meaning of a song. No, and you can you can listen to all basically every song that we've done to arrive. You could probably figure what it's about, but we had people come back to us with their own descriptions and meanings of the song, and that, there's no right or wrong answer to that. I mean, I can I can run through all ten songs on the new album and tell you what they're they're about, but uh, that would that probably wouldn't help because we want the listener to make up as as you said their own interpretation of it and that's, that's also the responsibility of the artist to let the listeners make up their own mind and opinion on something and not try 
might be too bushy mm-hmm. about it. So, so yeah, that, that's a very good way of, of portraying things. And, you know, some some artists, as you mentioned, that definitely do go that route. They they don't like to describe their lyrics or, or things like that because maybe they don't know what they <laughs> they're about. But I don't think that applies to Death White. Yeah, especially because I feel like Death White, like I feel like just from analyzing both like the lyrical, the lyrics in itself, and the vocal style and the music to support it, it almost. Um, I think it's fair to say that you tackle things from both a very literal and very metaphorical standpoint, right? Yeah, yeah. We try and we try and support gap. I guess play both sides of the fence because we could really get very metaphorical and analytical if if we wanted to. There are some very skilled lyric writers in the, in the band that could go this route, but then you think about the fact that we have a clean singer and you want him to sing stuff that maybe could be easily digestible, and we're not afraid of that at all. We're, we're not afraid to have, then we use the word catchy choruses. I know that's, that's sometimes a froth term within metal sometimes, but we're not afraid to have those, so it's, it's, a, it's a really delicate balance, and there have been some times where we probably have put together lyrics that, that are a bit too too deep and confusing and so we, we always try and simplify them and make them easier for for everyone involved so it, it really is a balancing act something that uh, we're, we're not quite there yet I, I think we've gotten better with each album and it's something that you could probably never master there are only a few bands out there that could that probably have truly mastered the art of, of splitting the gap between being metaphorical and, and relatable and we're, we're not quite there yet but uh, I think with every album we get closer yeah I mean it, it's a very difficult thing to do because it almost seems like you know there's certain bands where like one concept pretty much unifies their entire catalog like Rage Against the Machine for yeah. example like they're yeah. they're, a, they're a political band they don't need to do anything outside of that you know and then there's some bands that are very very personal with their lyrics and so but I feel like you can almost take these lyrics and approach them from any different angle and take it in any direction you want right exactly no I would agree with that Yep. And the final question I wanted to ask you is you said that you're using this time of isolation now, which I think is great because I've always said that isolation is sometimes the greatest fuel for art, especially for the musical style that you do. Are you planning to make a direct continuation of what we were hearing on Grave Image, or is this going to be almost like a new star for Death White in a way? It's hard to say. We have been working on the demos for the next album since probably late last year. We have... Right now, at least three songs that are, are ready to go, and then several more in varying stages of completion. We're all spread out now in the United States. Uh, two of us are still here in Pittsburgh, which is considered our home base. We have two other guys who are in the southern parts of the state. So uh, even without the quarantine and what's going on with the pandemic, we, it's unlikely we'd be, we'd be getting together much anyway. But we, we typically do start to trade files once the demo process continues and it looks like we've set a hard date of sometime in September to really hunker down and, and start the, the hard work on uh, the demos for album number three. But so far, some songs are a continuation of Grave Image. Some songs are a little heavier. We, Some of us in the band actually have an extreme metal background. Some of us have been in death and black metal bands. So some of that may creep in to some of the, the new songs. And then conversely, a few of the new songs are sounding more minimal than anything we've done before. So that's always a challenge with, with writing albums. Bands do this all the time. It's, if you find a formula that works, do you stick with it and just continue to recreate the same thing and sort of ride off into the sunset doing the same thing for the rest of your career? Or do you continue to tinker with that formula and try new things? I think we're leaning a lot towards the latter. We want to we wanna try new things and tinker with what no, what we know works and works with dead like obviously is the vocals and the riffs that we do but we'd like to try some new things and being that live shows seem like a not uh, just a non-entity right now uh, the music may even get a little bit more challenging so we don't have to think about replicating these things live because number one we're really not a live band anyway number two who knows when live shows we're doing anyway so uh, that should not be used as a as a restrictive element when thinking about new songs but yeah it's coming along we we are discussing right now, uh, possibly hitting the studio later this year, actually, to record maybe two or three songs, two new songs. 
songs and possibly a cover made from an Alice in Chains song and doing like a standalone release for some point next year. But that remains to be seen. It all depends on scheduling and uh, the pandemic and how far along we are with the, the new song. So still early, but yeah, we're making very good progress on things. Awesome. Well, DW, thank you so much for your time today. Really looking yeah, forward to hearing thank more. You. Everybody, we are here with DW yep. of Death White. Be sure to pick up Grave Image out now on Season of Mist and be on the lookout for new stuff coming soon, and we will see you next time on Heavy New York.